Signal is a description of how one parameter varies with other ones. For instance, voltage varying with time is considered a signal. Mathematically, signals are modeled as functions of one or more independent variables. And the most common examples of independent variables in electrical engineering are time and frequency. One of the most useful signals in the study of linear systems is unit impulse signals, denoted as delta d. The unit impulse is a function that its value is zero everywhere, except at t equal to zero, where its amplitude goes to infinity. Since its amplitude goes to infinity, we can define it in terms of amplitude. We define it by its area. The integration of delta t from minus infinity to plus infinity equal one. Unit impulse function is very difficult to visualize directly. One way to visualize it is as follows. Consider a tall narrow rectangle with weights of delta and height of 1 over delta such that the area enclosed by it is equal to 1. By decreasing the weights, the height is going to be increasing by the same factor so that the area enclosed by the rectangle remains to be 1. As the width approaches zero, the rectangle function converges to the impulse function with an infinite amplitude. However, the areas is still constant and equal to one. The unit impulse is visualized by an arrow pointed up vertically with height equals the area enclosed by the impulse function. Unit impulse function has a bunch of properties, but the most important is as follows. Integrating a unit impulse function results in one, provided that the limits of integration includes the impulse itself. Multiplication of an arbitrary function and an impulse function results in an impulse whose height equal to the value of the function at the location of the impulse. System is a device that processes input signal and produces output signal which is in general more desirable than the input one. Linear systems are systems whose output for a linear combination of inputs are the same as a linear combination of individual responses to those inputs. Time invariant systems are systems where the output does not depend on when an input was applied. When x of t leads to y of t, then when input is delayed by a certain amount of time, the output will delay by the same amount. If you combine these two features into one system, you get what's called Linear Time Invariant System, or LTI. Given an arbitrary signal x of t, if we can decompose this signal into a large number of simpler components, then all we have to do is to find the output of the simpler component, then multiply and delay it by the same factor as input. Consider an arbitrary signal x of t. By dividing the time axis into uniform time intervals, the value of x of t of the kth time interval can be approximated as a rectangle whose height equal to the value of the function at that interval, and whose width equal to delta. And this rectangle can be considered as an impulse function with an area equal to the value of the function at this time interval times delta. Doing the same procedure for all the time intervals, we get a staircase waveform that approximates the original signal. The smaller the value of delta, the more we get good approximation. Applying the limit to the approximated waveform where delta approaches zero, we get a waveform that converges to the original signal. So any arbitrary signal x of t can be represented as a linear combination of weighted time shifted impulse functions. And here comes the power of LTI system, given that any signal can be decomposed into weighted superposition of time shifted unit impulse functions, if you know the response of the system to the unit impulse functions, which is called the impulse response of a system, then you can get the response of the system to any arbitrary signal x of t. So let's look at an example to clarify the idea. If the impulse response of an LTI system is exponential function for t greater than zero, find the output of the system when the input is x of t, where x of t can be decomposed into three scale time shifted impulse functions. 
Since the system satisfies linearity and time shifting properties, the output is a superposition of scaled and time shifted impulse responses. So the key point of the video is that any signal x of t can be approximated as a sum of scaled and time shifted impulse functions. And the output of an LTI system whose input is that signal is also a sum of scaled and time shifted impulse responses of that system. Taking the limit at both sides, and as delta approaches zero, the summation becomes integration. Substituting k delta by tau and delta by d tau, we get what's called convolution integral. Mathematically, convolution is denoted by asterisk. This equation shows that when an input signal x of t is passed through an LTI system with impulse response h of t, the output of the system y of t can be calculated by convolving the input signal and the impulse response of the system. Convolution can be defined as the integral or the area under the curve of the product of two functions after one is reversed and shifted. The integral is evaluated for all values of shift producing the convolution function. 